Do you know what subject-verb agreement means? At first sight, the rule is clear and simple. The subject and its verb must both be singular or both plural. For example, Lisa studies at the university. Your arguments were very supportive. The lesson is over. That's a joke, of course. Certainly, there is a lot to say about this topic. Ling Portal Online School presents Subject Verb Agreement 10 rules that will help you to sound correct. Subject verb agreement errors signal that the speaker doesn't have fluency in English. Let's start our research of the subject verb rules. 1. Two or more subjects joined by and takes a plural verb. Very often, we list singular subjects joining them with and. For example, Lisa, Alex, and Emma go shopping on weekends. Sophie and her sisters walk to school on foot. Please note, when we talk about two things that we regard as a whole, then we use a singular verb. Even the subjects are joined with and. For example, the real bread and butter for authors is royalties. Titles and names also take a singular verb when they refer to one thing. For example, the sword and crown is that hotel in the city center. If the word each or every modifies a subject, that subject is singular and requires a singular verb ending with s. Each boy and each girl likes playing with toys. 2. Two or more subjects joined by or, nor, or but, the verb agrees with the nearest subject. For example, either Saturday or Sunday is okay for me. Either my wife or her sisters are going to drive you to the airport. 3. Subject joined with phrase by with or as well as takes a singular verb. Robert, with some of his friends, is buying a new business. Please note, after not only but also, the verb also addresses the nearest phrase. Here is an example. Not only Robert but also his friends are buying a new business. 4. Indefinite pronouns take a singular verb. The following indefinite pronouns always take a singular verb. It would be useful to memorize indefinite pronouns that take a singular verb. For example, everybody was in a relaxed mood. Please note, plural indefinite pronouns such as several, both, few, many, take plural verbs. Both women were Irish. 5. Nouns used with a quantifier can be singular or plural. This depends on whether the noun is countable or uncountable. Look at the example. Some of the apples were very sweet. Some of the research was conducted by the students. Pronouns and nouns that can be singular or plural depending upon context. 6. Relative pronoun plus verb. When we use relative pronouns, which, that, who, to introduce a relative clause, we must look at the noun which is referring by the pronoun. We need to realize whether that noun is singular or plural. Compare. The girl who eats ice cream is very happy. The girls who eat ice cream are very happy. 7. Positions of subject and verb. Sometimes, subject goes before or after a phrase. Let's look at the example. If phrases go after a subject, verbs agrees with the first noun. For example, the tree between the two houses is high. If the subject comes after the verb, the verb agrees with the subject. Phrase, verb, subject. For example, waiter, there is a fly in my soup. A great attraction are the craft workshops in the old part of the town. 8. Collective nouns. Some nouns refer to sort of group or collective of people, things, etc. Here are some examples. Team, staff, set, bunch, pack, etc. When we talk about such a group, we could regard it as a unit or as a group, and depending on that, we use either singular or plural verb. 
For example, her family were easy to deal with. I regard her family as individuals. Her family is an example of good relations. I regard her family as a one unit. 9. A phrase of measurement takes a singular verb. For example, 10 kilometers is too far for me to run. Three hours is quite a chunk of my working day. 10. Some words ending with S, such as economics, news, billiards, linguistics, takes a singular verb. The reason is that if we omit S, they will transform into another word. For example, mathematics is my favorite subject. Subject-verb agreement in English grammar ensures that the subject and verb match in number. Singular subjects take singular verbs, and plural subjects take plural verbs. This rule ensures clarity and coherence in communication.